Results of a new series of studies have been released from the Utah Women and Leadership Project at Utah State University. The first one was released today, focusing on Pacific Islander women in Utah. Fox 13 News anchor Amy Nay has a look at the data. As you mentioned, this is the first of five studies addressing women of color here in Utah, their strengths, weaknesses, where greater resources are needed, and the need for further data collection. As study author Susan Madsen told me earlier, this is a good place to start. Many, many years ago, started the work that I do um, with a request from the Commissioner of Higher Education in 2009 to do some work to figure out why more women weren't graduating from college. So we've expanded since then and really do research on all areas that really focus on women. A few of the areas of focus for the study by the Utah Women in Leadership Project at USU include, among others, education, health care, poverty, unemployment, and family makeup. For instance, household size among Pacific Islander women in Utah was found to be larger than other Pacific Islander groups in America and larger than for other women in Utah. But more households led by women with no spouse present, about 19 percent compared to about 12 percent when you compare to all Utah women. Important information, Madsen says, was found when it comes to health care and the need to provide greater resources. Pacific Islander women are less likely to have health insurance. Um, more likely to forego medical care due to cost, less likely to have a personal doctor or receive preventative care. In education, it was found that Pacific Islander women were most likely to finish their education with only a high school degree. 18% of Pacific Islander women versus 29% of all Utah women with a bachelor's degree. And Pacific Islander women have the lowest college enrollment rate of all racial and gender subgroups. This is just step one with Pacific Islanders, and, and we look at forward to um, doing more research on, on this group in the future. Susie Felch Malo Ifao with the Pacific Islander Knowledge to Action Resources Coalition, or PICTAR in Salt Lake, reacted to the study with first and foremost a thank you. Telling Fox 13 News Thursday, thank you very much for acknowledging that we are here and that we have some disparities in our community because we are small and don't have the resources to do it ourselves. We need their help. We don't have the bandwidth, the resources, and the expertise in our small group to gather the data. So thank you, and it says as a state that you acknowledge that we are here. Susie also told me that some of the findings were incorrect, especially when it came to mental health, where her group is working closely with so many who are struggling in that area. But she believes it's due to that limited data collection that the study author admitted, and she hopes that that will continue to improve. Overwhelmingly, though, Susie's response was that of gratitude for the research at all and for what she believes is a commitment to help improve the quality of life, not only for those in her community, but all women in our state. If you'd like to see the findings, we've got a link on our website, Fox 13 now.com. Reporting from the newsroom, Amy Nay, Fox 13 News, Utah.